So good evening all. Uh, today we, we will be discussing about uh, research methods for business. Uh, this is our first class for this semester. And uh, I hope that uh, you already have a great start uh, to, to this semester because today was your first day. And uh, <clears throat> let us hope that uh, this semester goes well as well. OK. so. Uh, this session is about research methods for business and uh, as you know that this is uh, the, the word research uh, this sounds very intimidating for many students you know uh, they consider research as a very uh, you know uh, scholarly in nature and uh, a topic which is solely uh, made for PhD scholars or you know MS scholars or, or those people who are supposed to write thesis but uh, in reality research is very much relevant and related to our lives so in this uh, first session I hope to give you a clear understanding about um, uh, what uh, you should expect from this course and uh, what kind of uh, learning uh, uh, you think you, you could have by studying this uh, research course. Okay, so first of all, some th introduction about me. I'm from Pakistan, uh, but I have lived a fair amount of time in China. Uh, I did my PhD from uh, Dongbei Saijing Tashwe. Uh, it is a university which is located in Dalian. Dalian is a very beautiful coastal city. Uh, it is a hilly area as well. Uh, it is a very popular tourist spot. Uh, after completing my PhD, I went back to Pakistan and I did, started my career as an assistant professor in a very popular university there, Pahoudin Zakaria University. Uh, after spending some time there, three years, I came back to China. I joined uh, Fudan University. Uh, Fudan University is in Shanghai. I did my postdoc there. Uh, I spent two and a half years in Fudan University and during my stay at Fudan University I also received a Young International Scientist Award from National Science Foundation of China. Uh, I believe in having an international an active international research agenda which means that uh, I'm working on several research projects uh, simultaneously. Uh, these days uh, about COVID-19, about uh, marketing, about destination marketing. So I will share uh, some of my research with you during the course of this semester as well. So this is a brief introduction about me. Now let us uh, start uh, our research, uh, you know, journey. I would call this a journey because uh, uh, all of you are supposed to conclude an individual research project and uh, you know that a research project basically uh, encapsulates all the knowledge which you have accumulated in the course of this uh, you know this semester or this subject uh, in uh, in your research project so first of all we need to be very clear about the definition of research now uh, business research uh, is a systematic and organized effort to investigate a specific problem encountered in the work setting which needs a solution. Now let us break down this definition into meaningful parts. Research uh, is a combination of two words, re and search. So in literal meaning, uh, it is a recurring process. It is a process that is done again and again. It is systematic and organized because research follows certain protocols and without those protocols our research cannot be considered credible so we have to follow those protocols and otherwise our research will not be considered trustworthy by other people in the society so we have to follow these guidelines these rules and regulation these protocols secondly this is an investigation now Investigation is a very interesting word, uh, which you, I think, uh, you're aware of this word uh, uh, through spy movies, through crime movies, where there is an investigator, the main protagonist is an investigator uh, that he or she is trying to solve a mystery, he or she is trying to solve a case. So you will act as an investigator. You will wear the hat of investigator and you will investigate a problem. So now you will know that um, uh, for investigation, you need to follow certain protocols. Without those protocols, 
your investigation will be compromised so you need to uh, be very specific you need to follow those guidelines which we will uh, study during the course of uh, this semester thirdly we investigate a specific problem now this is very important as well research is about uh, you know uh, it is about investigating a specific problem we will not be investigating a broad problem a specific problem means that uh, for instance um, uh, one example of specific problem is uh, the academic involvement of one jukin university students um, uh, when they are uh, facing three modes of learning for instance they are they are also experiencing hybrid uh, learning they are also experiencing face to face as well as uh, remote learning so these are the three learning environments which uh, one jukin university students are uh, you know uh, encountering these days so what about their academic involvement how academic involvement can be uh, integrated uh, in these three learning environments so this is a very specific problem okay so we have defined this problem very specifically that we want to discuss academic involvement we want to see how the academic involvement can be integrated across different modes of learning so uh, our focus should be on specific problem encountered in the work setting because this is business research so we are conducting business research that is why our focus should be business aspects we will not be discussing those research problems which are out of the business context so this is uh, something which you should keep in mind during this semester that uh, our business uh, our research should be you know uh, focused around business uh, so we we won't be you know uh, going to the to the, to the disciplines of uh, you know uh, so sociology or education psychology we will try our best to keep within the boundaries of uh, business research so this research is a recurring process which is very organized it has certain protocols where you will act as an investigator you will uh, try to solve a problem you will try to investigate a problem and that problem must be business re uh, related so this is a short concise and precise uh, definition of uh, business research now before we embark upon this journey of business research uh, before you start uh, thinking that <clears throat> i want to solve this problem i want to uh, investigate this problem you need to be very clear about what kind of research you want to do now uh, there are various kinds of research and uh, uh, and this introductory lecture will uh, you know make you uh, you know uh, it will introduce you to those research types so the first type is the research uh, type by application do you want to do applied research or basic research and you have to be clear right in the beginning because both research types have different protocols like applied research is uh, organized differently and basic research is organized differently now the main difference between applied research and basic research is this that applied research is more you know specific is more focused is more uh, you know uh, narrow in scope so the first difference is the degree of scope the applied research is more focused it is more specific and more narrow in scope while the basic research is more broad so in basic research <clears throat> Uh, we try to comprehend the problem we try to understand the problem by going through existing body of knowledge okay so the primary purpose of conducting basic research is to generate more knowledge to generate more knowledge and develop more understanding of uh, the problem which we are uh, you know investigating while in applied research we try to solve a current problem which an organization is facing so we we are more focused on organizational specific problem and we find organizational specific solutions for example uh, let us uh, discuss this problem of employee absenteeism okay so this is a problem this is a, a research area employee absenteeism and uh, now we want to study different factors 
uh, which lead to employ absenteeism. Now, how we will study this topic uh, via applied research and how we will study this topic via basic research, this will make you very, uh, you know, your understanding of these research types very clear. While studying employee absenteeism uh, in a particular organization uh, through applied research, because applied research is organization specific. Now, we are studying employee absenteeism in a specific organization, and we realize that in that organization, employee absenteeism is a function of culture. There is a culture in that organization uh, which uh, which is developed over the years that which uh, motivate employees to get absent from their work. So there is a culture of absenteeism. There, 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 the rules and regulations are not that rigid. So there, are, uh, there is a culture over the years have developed that employees get absent from their work. So they usually get absent from their work once or uh, once or twice a week. So you get this answer that organizational culture is the main, uh, you know, factor uh, behind the employee absenteeism, and that is an organization specific issue because it is, uh, it was observed by you in that specific organization. Now, if you want to study the same topic through basic research domain, now basic research will help you identify, uh, you know, uh, the existing knowledge. What is the existing knowledge of, about absenteeism? Now you will start reading research papers that how employee absenteeism uh, is being attributed by different researchers over the years. And you come to realize that employee absenteeism is a matter of uh, you know, employee motivation. And then you come to realize that employee uh, absenteeism is basically uh, explained very well by theory X and theory Y. Now, this is a motivation theory. This theory states that there are basically two kinds of people in, in an organization, uh, X category people and Y category people. Category people are those people who dislike the work. They don't take their work seriously. They, they don't take the responsibility. And the category people are those uh, employees who like their work. They take the responsibility of their work. And, uh, you know, they are very responsible employees. So uh, th the theory of motivation, the theory X and Y, uh, it explains that employee absenteeism is due to lack of motivation. And because, theory, uh, because the X uh, category employees exist in organizations, it may be possible that their effect may be transformed or transferred to the uh, y category people so this is one of the explanation which you uh, you know uh, realize from the literature by studying the existing literature and th there's an, an, another explanation conservation of resources theory uh, this comes up with a, an, another very interesting explanation now this theory states that uh, employees or people people they, they have limited resources and people try to conserve their resources and by resources, uh, I mean that people have limited energy. They want to conserve their energy. And by getting absent from you know, work, they, they are trying to conserve their energy because they found uh, um, you know, organizational life very stressful. So uh, in order to avoid getting burned out, they try to conserve their resources by going on vacations, by getting absent from their work to try to restore their energy levels. So it it defines absenteeism as, uh, you know, as a function of organizational stress because this, it is uh, organization highly stressful place. That is why employees are getting absent. This, and this theory, the theory X and Y, uh, it describes absenteeism as, as a matter of, as a function of motivation. So see how we are differentiating between applied research and the basic research. The basic research uh, is building the premises on, uh, you know, on the basis of uh, the existing knowledge. Uh, the applied research is very uh, contextual and very situational in nature, and it it, uh, it is trying to find the answers in that organizational. Uh, contextual factor. On the other hand, basic researcher is trying to find the answers uh, in, you know, uh, in more broader way. Uh, way. So the results applied from the basic research, the, uh, the, uh, the employee motivation is the cause of absenteeism or the uh, uh, organizational stress is the cause of employee absenteeism. Uh, these research, these results can be applied to many organizations. These, 
these results can be applied to many sectors. On the other hand, applied research prob uh, uh, the answer that the organizational culture is is responsible for employee absenteeism. Now this is a very organizational specific answer and this may not be you know applied uh, to organizations so this is the uh, uh, another difference between uh, these two research types that applied research uh, generalization is very limited in nature basic research can be generalized to uh, you know other organizations as well so you need to be very clear about what kind of research you want to conduct now uh, my personal recommendation would be to conduct basic research because for applied research you need uh, you know um, your special access to that organization you need access to uh, various uh, you know classified information and that organization uh, might not be willing to give you that information so first you need to prove that you have access to that organization then uh, you can do you know applied research otherwise basic research is uh, you know highly recommended <clears throat> Okay, so uh, you might come up with this question. Uh, do organizations they conduct basic research as well? The answer is yes. Many large companies like Apple, BMW, General Electric, Google, Microsoft, etc., they are also engaged in basic research. For instance, uh, basic research is carried out uh, by German BMW facilities uh, to uh, reduce the greenhouse gas emissions and promote electromobility innovations google and facebook uh, the study online behavior and interactions to gain uh, insights into how social and technological forces interact so uh, they uh, design more interactive facebook features they design more interactive uh, applications so yes basic research is uh, conducted by organizations as well okay so if you are trying to conduct basic research, what is the first step? The first step is to find the knowledge gap. Because uh, now you are being a researcher, you are a knowledge creator. Okay, so you have studied other subjects, uh, you have studied the knowledge which is created by other people. Now is the time to create your own knowledge. So when you are pursuing basic research as your you know major, major you know line of action basic research requires you to create knowledge and you cannot create knowledge without knowing the gaps in the knowledge okay so you need to know the gap so knowledge gap is that area that topic or field of research which is still not fully developed so uh, we can classify knowledge gap into three different categories uh, micro knowledge gap uh, it is you know uh, valuable but it is not that valuable minor knowledge gap uh, it is okay it is a very valuable thing and major <clears throat> major knowledge gap it is the major contribution uh, to the ex existing uh, research now i will try to uh, you know uh, give different examples and uh, to make you understand uh, different knowledge gaps for instance when we talk about <clears throat> micro knowledge gap so an example of micro knowledge gap could be the academic involvement in online business research course among the returning students at College of Business Pub and Public Management at Wanju Keen University after lockdown. Now, this is a micro knowledge gap. Why? Because we are focusing on single subject online, you know, business research course. Okay, single mode of learning only online we are focusing on single subject business research that's it we are focusing on a single premises okay college of business and public management in a single university okay so this is very you know uh, 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 you know very basic in nature you uh, you have confined you have put too many boundaries in your research like uh, you are only focusing on business research course now there are more than 50 to 60 courses that are being offered uh, in your uh, you know department uh, there are more than you know 60 15 departments in the university but you are only focusing on single department there are three modes of learning online hybrid and face to face but you are only focusing on 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 online so assuming that this research has not been conducted before now i'm assuming that uh, I, I will uh, 
tell you how to find a knowledge gap but just mean that this research has never been conducted before the academic involvement in online business research courses among returning students uh, you know at college of business and public management uh, it is a minor, micro knowledge gap and uh, i'm not saying that this is not a valuable contribution it is a valuable contribution and yes you can con uh, you, know, you you can try to fill micro knowledge gap and then there is minor knowledge gap now just look at the example of a minor knowledge gap academic involvement of students okay so this is we are focusing on students and faculty student relationships in online hybrid and face to face classes so it is more broader it means that our results can be generalized to many different you know uh, 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 populations uh, across uh, the sectors for example we are focusing on uh, on courses we are not focusing on single course we are focusing on all the courses because we have not specified we are focusing on all the three modes of learning online hybrid and face to face we are not only focusing on a single uh, you know uh, mode of learning like online so we are we are not all we have not specified that uh, college of business and public management this is something which uh, uh, you know we have not specified maybe we are uh, you know uh, collecting data from across the departments maybe we are collecting data from various universities so this is a minor knowledge gap assuming that this research has not been conducted before this topic the academic inv uh, involvement and faculty student relationship this topic has not been researched before and you now you are uh, discussing this topic uh, this is a minor knowledge gap and uh, this is a very valuable contribution major knowledge gap now uh, i will just give you an example and you will understand uh, about the major knowledge gap the example is if you are conducting research on how has covid-19 changed the, the pedagogical environment how has covid-19 changed the teen environment the the learning environment now this is a major knowledge gap why because covid-19 is a recent phenomena it is just 8 to 9 months old so not much research Uh, is published on this topic not not much research has been uh, you know done in this topic and this is a very important area as well because due to covid-19 many universities around the world are still closed and those universities which are open they are still finding it difficult to integrate uh, their normal operations with uh, you know the, the newer settings that have come into existence due to covid-19 so this is a major knowledge gap because not much research is uh you know published uh, on this domain uh so if you if nobody has done the research on this topic okay that's nice this is this is a major contribution but if still some people have done research on this topic but uh, because you are you are, you are the first one uh, who are uh, you know who is going to conduct uh, this research in a different context like china okay it means that it is still a valuable contribution because when a phenomena is new uh you want to replicate that phenomena in different situations if that this research has already been conducted in america then uh it is equally important to conduct this research in china because you know there are around 1000 universities in china so it is equally important to conduct this research in you know uk because there are many universities in uk as well so that is why uh even though some people have started doing research on this topic still there is a knowledge gap so you need to understand what kind of knowledge gap you are trying to fill okay there is i i recommend all kinds of uh, you know a gap uh, there is no uh, uh, you know a particular recommendation from my side i will be okay with micro knowledge gap as well minor as well and major as well because uh, these are all contributions to the knowledge you need to understand the role of theory in knowledge gap now you need to base your research on a theory Uh, and you need to specify how knowledge is being contributed by your research now this is a very very important uh, um, you know part let me try to give you uh, an example and try to explain uh, what is meant by this role of theory for example there is a theory and the theory is expectancy theory we yeah, have written this theory uh, expectancy theory okay now this theory Uh, proposes that people will choose how to behave depending on the outcomes they expect okay 
so in in other words people decide what to do based on what they expect the outcome to be okay so this is expectancy theory now for example you are using this theory to explain the behavior of students who don't like to submit their assignments after deadline okay you are using expectancy theory to explain why students do not submit their assignments after deadline and you give this explanation because uh, the students expect that delayed submission will have a negative impact on their grades okay so we are using expectancy theory to explain why students are not uh, you know why students are hesitant uh, why students are, are afraid to submit their assignments after uh, deadlines and why they want to submit uh, assignments before the deadlines now see if you are the first one okay if you are among the first one uh, let's uh, simplify it further if you are among the first few uh, you know uh, researchers who have used this theory expectancy theory to explain this behavior of the students that uh, they submit assignments before the deadlines because they expect that delayed submission will have a negative consequence on their grades so if you are among the first few researchers uh, who are using expectancy theory to explain this behavior of the consumers you are contributing to the knowledge okay so this is the role of theory because the theory is very organized knowledge okay and you need to have a theory to explain different minas different organizational aspects different human uh, aspects consumer behavior aspects you know or leadership styles all these are explained by different theories so you need to have a theoretical explanation and if your explanation if your theoretical explanation uh, is not made by other researchers and you are among the um, among the first few researchers who who are making those uh, theoretical explanations then you are making a valuable contribution to the knowledge like i just gave you an example expectancy theory and um, uh, if you are using expectancy theory to explain the student behavior who do not submit late assignments then and supposing that nobody else has explained this behavior using expectancy theory then this is called as contribution to the knowledge this is called as creating new knowledge now you are not creating new theory you are just you know you know extending the scope of the theory now this is also a contribution so you as a researcher you need to uh, be very clear you need to be clear that uh, many theories vary in the extent to which they have been conceptually developed and empirically tested because for instance expectancy theory is a well developed theory and finding a major knowledge gap uh, in this theory may be difficult for you but you can still contribute uh, uh, a minor knowledge gap but there are some theories uh, which are still developing like uh, you know uh, like one of my favorite theories which i uh, you know uh, is my research interest as well nation branding the theory of nation branding the theory of nation branding states that uh, the countries can be branded as well just like products just like you know services the, the countries can be branded as well now this is the a theory which came up in 2005 and it is still developing and there are many aspects of in that theory which still can be developed uh, which still can be you know explored by you so uh, if, if you want to choose a knowledge gap you you want you, you should choose theory as well you should be very careful that that theory uh, has some scope in it as well otherwise very mature very fully developed theory like maslow's hierarchy theory it is very difficult to make uh, further additions in that theory uh, it is possible but very challenging okay so now i will uh, try to explain how you can find knowledge gap for finding knowledge gap uh, i will recommend a very efficient uh, way google scholar you can simply type scholar.google.com uh, you can go to the google scholar website it is a search engine it is a basically meta database uh, i think it is the largest database of research articles in the world so suppose you want to do research on student satisfaction and 
uh, we use special you know uh, algorithms to do uh, proper searching on google scholar so you have uh, written uh, written student satisfaction in inverted commas and you have seen that 169,000 results are generated by this simple query. Now, this is, you know, uh, very, very, uh, you know, important to understand that uh, it means that this topic, student satisfaction, is a mature topic. It is, uh, it has been uh, researched over the years and and again in different contexts with different variables. Next, you want to see that. What is the recent status of uh, literature on, on this topic? So you choose since 2020 here. So you see that in in the nine months uh, in on in the eight months of uh, 2020, uh, more than 5,000 research papers have been published on this topic. Again, it means that it is pretty much a very mature topic. It is a it is pretty much a very recent topic, and it is still very trendy. Now. Because uh, this topic is pretty much mature, you want to uh, study student satisfaction with an other situation, which is which will make this uh, you know unique, which will make uh, which will help you find the gap in the in, uh, in the research. Okay, so you combine student satisfaction with another scenario, remote learning. Okay, uh, inverted commas, student satisfaction. Then you give space and write A and D, capital and and another space and then inverted commas you write remote learning so you want to study student satisfaction in remote learning environment okay so now 463 research results are generated it is a good thing because it means that your uh, results are narrowed down from 169000 to just 463 but still you want further uh, you know clarification you want you know more you want to have uh, a clear cut gap still there is no gap because in order to find the gap you need to read these 463 research papers you be more smart so what do you do you write another situation academic stress so now we have three different you know uh, combination of situations we want to study academic stress and student satisfaction in remote learning environment and only five research results are generated okay so this shows that there is a gap there is a certain gap in this research area and uh, by careful uh, deliberation by reading more and more research papers you can uh, smartly find a research gap okay but you have to be very careful now you have not read a single research paper and still you are able to find a research gap is this the right thing to do not really you need to read research papers as well just by you know fi uh, finding a different random combination of variables will not uh, help you identify a clear cut uh, knowledge gap so you need to be very careful that these variables are not random combination of variables now for instance if you write student satisfaction and here you write a rainbow or you write butterfly or you write caterpillar okay you will have zero research results so there is a gap here but is it relevant you want to do research uh, on student satisfaction the relationship between student satisfaction and rainbow is it a is it a relevant research uh, it might not be a it, it is definitely not a relevant research uh, because um, there is no theory to to you know base your research on so uh, you have to be very careful that your research uh, terms, these terminologies, these variables are not just random combination. They are uh, relevant, they are related, and uh, they make sense. Otherwise, uh, you cannot find the relevant theory. Okay, so that is why Google Scholar is an efficient way uh, to find knowledge gap, but it is not the best way to find the knowledge gap because you are supposed to read the articles as well and just by using google scholar uh, it is not recommended that you will find the knowledge gap you need to read the articles as well okay for example any unexplored point of is not a knowledge gap how to sleep for eight hours in three hours okay this is an unexplored 
thing even google is you know getting angry uh, over this uh, you know uh, search term so any unexplored point of view is not knowledge gap you need to link that uh, gap with the theory if you cannot find the theory it means that uh, there is something wrong there was a reason that why that topic was not researched so you need to find the theories okay so how to find the theory let us go to the that slide again student satisfaction 169000 results the paper which is most prominent uh, it has 844 citations <clears throat> there may be other papers as well uh, which have more citations than this paper you need to read these papers you need to see how these papers uh, uh, you know they lay their foundation on on which theory uh, they base their research on and most importantly it is a 20 years old research paper so maybe the findings are still not relevant. The theory, uh, maybe it has matured. So you need to find latest research as well uh, on your topic. It is published in highly you know, prestigious journals. And we will come to that uh, topic of uh, prestigious journals in uh, our literature review section as well. So I actually suggest one very preferred way of finding knowledge gap is reading the introduction section of uh, latest research published in prestigious journals. Now, let me give you an example of uh, how an introduction section can help you identify knowledge gap. Now, this is a research paper which is published in April 2020, just three, just four months. Okay, so this research paper is about uh, tourist attractions um, of copy sites. Copy sites are those replica architecture. Uh, those replica architectural landmarks uh, which are which, which you found these days for for, for example uh, the eiffel tower uh, if eiffel tower has replicas uh, you know in your surroundings and that becomes a tourist spot we can call it a copy site now how uh, these copy sites uh, you know the role of these copy sites in the uh, tourism uh, literature now this is a very interesting research and it was published as a management one of the top journals of tourism so let, uh, let us evaluate how these authors they have found their knowledge gap so this is the part of their introduction existing research on copy sites it is not only limited but also descriptive and non-theoretical in nature they are claiming that uh, whatever research is done on copy sites is limited as well as non-theoretical in nature. So no theoretical foundation is found. And with reference to China, only limited socio-historic view is present. And even that historic view is Im embedded within temporal and cultural variations of simulacrum object. Now simulacrum object is that a copied object, like Eiffel Tower is in uh, France, but its copy is in once you then that copied object is called as a uh, simulacrum object okay so they are claiming that even the, the existing research is based on the objects not on the tourists okay very limited attention is given to the tourists so they are claiming this and this is the claim which is made just three or four months back so if you want to do research on this topic you should go ahead because this is this topic is still uh, you know very uh, open uh, to investigation and you can explore different possibilities by studying this uh, uh, by studying this research topic so uh, you can uh, you have to ensure that you are not actually exploring the same thing which they have explored and it should be significantly you know uh, sufficiently different from uh, what uh, the research agenda was and then it can be a very good contribution to the knowledge okay so how can you do applied research? Uh, some people might be uh, worried about uh, how applied research can be done in real world. So uh, I will give you an example about applied research, uh, especially the soft drink industry around, around the world is facing a, a very major issue. Their sales are declining. Uh, even their alternatives like the Diet Coke, uh, uh, you know, they are not perceived uh, positively by consumers around the world because uh, they believe that artificially sweetened beverages like Coke Zero or Diet Pepsi, they have been linked to other health issues, including increased risk of uh, heart disease, uh, artificial sweeteners like uh, aspartame, 
uh, they are used in diet coke and pepsi and the study has found a link between these artificially sweetened beverages and an increased risk of disease among people with no prior history of heart disease so it has also been related with type 2 diabetes so it means that first of all people are uh, very much aware of uh, you know the soft drinks uh, uh, the regular soft drinks that they are damaging for their health secondly even those soft drinks uh, you know which uh, these companies they produce as an alternative uh, by claiming that they do not contain uh, sugar they are even more damaging as compared to the uh, you know uh, regular drinks so what is their main research problem they want to create a perfect sweetener otherwise their sales are declining and in few years if they can't stop this trend uh, this might be out of fashion so they want to create perfect sweetener which is not harmful for the health this is the basic you know uh, you know tenet of this whole case this is the applied research problem okay so many other forms of business research uh, you, you can discuss uh, like these are the topics which are very popular topics especially this covid 19 you know covid 19 is uh, it is relatively easier to find the gap in covid 19 uh, uh, you know topic Other, uh, otherwise uh, it is very uh, difficult to find uh, you know gap in, in other uh, topics but in covid 19 you can find a, a knowledge gap uh, in case of COVID-19, the impact of COVID-19 on learning, on job, on consumption, on social capital, on intellectual capital, etc., uh, it is much easier. Okay, so I will stop here, and uh, I will stop here for questions. So, if you have any questions at the moment, please feel free to discuss with me. Any questions? Any questions from the discussion we have made so far? Okay, let's move ahead. Uh, okay, so uh, let's move to the next slide. So, so we are discussing research types, and we have just uh, you know uh, discussed one research type, the research by application. Okay, uh, I've I recommended that you should do pure research or basic research, and you can uh, pursue applied research only in those situations where you have access to that organization or that sector where you want to do applied research now we need to differentiate research uh, by objectives as well so there are four different research objectives uh, the descriptive research exploratory research explanatory and correlational research here uh, i will recommend these two types exploratory and explanatory uh, this is something which uh, is very very conditional and I will not recommend descriptive research at all why uh, let us discuss why okay so a descriptive study describes a situation um, or a problem and provide information about uh, population characteristics it, it is a very basic level you know uh, research for example if you want to do conduct descriptive research you could do uh, such kinds of research like what percentage of uh, Wanchukin University graduates uh, get admission in top 500 universities of the world? Okay. For instance, if this is your research problem, how will you investigate this? You will just, uh, you know, uh, there are various alumni associations. You will try to get information from those alumni associations, or you can simply contact different departments that how many graduates have got admission in top 500 universities of the world so this is a very basic thing so you can 
easily uh, you know come up with a figure that uh, okay 50 percent or 20 percent of the graduate they got it they get admission in top 500 universities of the world etc so that's why uh, the protocols to conduct descriptive research it is very very you know simple so that is why uh, i will not recommend this uh, descriptive research at all exploratory research so it is a kind of research uh, which uh, which is undertaken when little is known about the research domain the state of existing knowledge is very basic in nature in that field like uh, the covid-19 effect on consumption habit of consumers uh, it is still uh, you know evolving field of uh, research very limited existing knowledge uh, is available that how consumption habits of consumers change by covid-19 so if you want to do exploratory research you are more than welcome to do but you need to be aware of the challenges for example the most important challenge would be the ex existing nature of knowledge now the existing nature of knowledge may be very limited so it means that uh, you you might not be able to make predictions on the basis of uh, limited evidences so how would you you know do, do exploratory research you might need to change your method of reasoning uh, which i will describe here so you might need to do unstructured research okay just hold on this thought i will come to this uh, thought again correlational study so it is a study which is conducted to find the association between two situations okay or two aspects of the same situation for example if you want to uh, conduct a study on uh, how advertisement campaign has affected on sales whether there is a positive relationship or a negative relationship or there is a stagnant relationship then this is a correlational research okay so this is a very simple research as well so you you are just interested in, in finding whether the two situations are interdependent on each other or not. Okay. But explanatory research, the main difference between explanatory and correlational is this that in explanatory, we 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 not only want to find out the association between uh, two aspects of the same situation, but we also want to find out why that relationship exists, why that situation, why that association exists. Okay, for instance, job stress is if job stress is high, we expect job performance to decline. Okay, so this is a um, uh, you know, simple thing, but in explanatory research, we also want to find out that why high job stress is leading to low job performance. And this why answer is not, uh, you know, why question is not answered in the correlational research. So that is why I like you, I will recommend you to conduct explanatory research as well and you can conduct correlational research only if the situations are extremely novel okay so you need to find out extremely novel situations if the situations are extremely novel then okay the correlational research is okay as well okay so next we will uh, read about the research types by inquiry mode so these, there are three types of inquiries, quantitative research, quality research, and mixed method research. So quantitative research is also called as a structured approach. Uh, and qualitative research is also called as unstructured approach. So what is the main difference between the quantitative and the qualitative or structured or unstructured? Uh, in structured approach, everything that forms the research process is predetermined. Uh, unstructured approach allows flexibility in several aspects of the research uh, for example course is extremely structured you know all the 16 units were developed before even the commencement of semester all the discussion questions all the assignments were predetermined we did not make you know uh, we don't have the you know uh, you know flexibility now now to change those discussion questions because they were made before before the commencement of this uh, semester your bs four year program is extremely structured very all things are uh, pl are planned about what courses you will take about the credit hours uh, you, you need to uh, complete so uh, research can also be structured and uh, i will come uh, on this uh, you know uh, on this topic in the next slide so please hold this thought let us discuss this thing this is uh, another research type. Uh, we evaluate research by time horizon. Uh, uh, a research can be longitudinal and it can be cross-sectional as well. Uh, a longitudinal research means that uh, you know 
uh, you follow the same sample over a long period of time or, or over time in cross-sectional studies we recruit or select a fresh sample uh, uh, each time when, whenever we, uh, we we collect data whereas in longitudinal studies we follow the same sample over the uh, over the period of time for example if you want to do research on stock market performance uh, of last 10 years or, or last 20 years you can you will study the same compass uh, the same stock market and you will study uh, you know these uh, stock markets uh, the same uh, the unit of analysis will remain the same the unit of analysis will not changed uh, in cross-sectional research uh, we collect data only single time in longitudinal research we collect data uh, you know more than one time but the unit of analysis will remain same I, I will give you an example to clarify this for instance uh, you are doing research on consumers before they consume the services at restaurant and after they consume the services at restaurant now your unit of analysis is same for instance the same consumer will be uh, surveyed or reviewed before the service is consumed and the same consumer will be interviewed after the, after the service will be consumed so this is a longitudinal study as uh, again because you are collecting data at two different time periods but the unit of analysis is same uh, in cross-sectional study <clears throat> the dot that the data is collected in a single time and the unit of analysis uh, is different if you are if you, if you want to collect data again if you want my suggestion or recommendation i am open to longitudinal research as well as uh, cross-sectional research okay so now we need, need to find out uh, the, the main difference between structured or unstructured or otherwise called as quantitative or qualitative research. In quantitative research, we make predictions. For example, uh, I find out uh, from a research paper that uh, the COVID-19 has uh, caused change in consumption habits of consumers in Italy. And I also uh, re uh, read a research that the COVID-19 has uh, you know change the consumption habits of consumers in USA so on the basis of these evidences uh, I make a prediction uh, you know my this is not a prediction only this is a, an educated guess okay I am guessing I am predicting that um, the consumption habit of consumers in China uh, will also be changed because I have evidence that consumption habit of consumers in Italy and USA uh, they have been changed so uh, within that uh, perspective I make this prediction and I you know create uh, this prediction before I start collecting data so that it means that whatever I want to find out is predetermined okay I have you know predetermined thinking that uh, consumers in China their consumption habits are changed due to COVID-19 so I can change the similar instruments which have been used in Italy or in USA and I can use similar methods which have been used in uh, you know Italy or USA in qualitative research we go with open mind we don't uh, you know uh, predetermine the end situation we don't predetermine the outcome so we go with open mind so in qualitative qualitative research uh, we will ask ourselves a question that uh, is consumption habit of uh, uh, you know consumers in china are they changed uh, because of covid-19 so we have not made up our mind in quantitative research we have made up our mind that yes on the basis of evidences which we have seen from italy and usa we ex expect that uh, the consumption habit of chinese consumers is also changed but in qualitative data uh, we go with open mind we don't have any preconceived idea we don't we don't get affixed we are very flexible and we might need to spend time with our consumers we might need to see them shopping okay we might need to uh, you know see how they are shopping and uh, we'll take notes how they are shopping is there any change in their habits so this is something which is uh, you know which called qualitative research uh, you know it tries to uh, explore it is very flexible and again it is very challenging as well because in qualitative research there is a problem 
uh, the existing, uh, you know, especially in unstructured approach. Uh, not all qualitative uh, researches uh, have, uh, you know, this problem. But especially in the unstructured uh, approach, the knowledge, the existing knowledge may not be sufficient. So, so it is very challenging for you to, you know, uh, lay the foundation of your research when the theory is not uh, developed fully and the theory is still in the uh, preliminary stage. Okay. Mixed methods means that you are using qualitative as well as quantitative methods. And we will discuss uh, this in detail when our uh, methodology section comes up. Okay, uh, why managers want, uh, they should know about, uh, you know, research, very uh, important question, because managers with knowledge of research, they have an adv advantage over those without knowledge of research, uh, because uh, it helps you identify research from the bad research, because uh, many organizations, they hire external research agencies uh to solve their you know problems uh, to identify their consumer segments to to you know um, to do research on various aspects of their uh, you know organizational uh, issues being a manager who has a good knowledge of research will help you identify good research and and you know discriminate it from the bad research uh, it also uh, will help you you know take uh, calculated risks in decision making because you have already acted as an investigator during the research process now it will help you uh, you know uh, being a manager uh, you you will have to understand predict and control events that are dysfunctional within the organization so there will be situations uh, which, uh, which you will uh, find out that why my sales are not taking off my sales why my sales target are not uh, come uh, you know fulfilling why my investments are not paying off why my team is not motiv motivated why my employees are getting absent from the work why they are quitting the organization so uh, being a researcher you know makes you uh, uh, you know uh, uh, help you make decisions uh, more uh, you know uh, it helps you combine your experience with the scientific knowledge and makes you appreciate different factors that are behind uh, those uh, situations so it just broaden your horizons and your level of thinking so lastly we will be discussing about research philosophies now philosophy is a very you know difficult and very intimidating very daunting term but we need to understand this uh, because uh, you want to do your own research your semester research project is very important so that is why we you need to understand the research philosophies so research philosophy is basically uh, the manner in which knowledge is being developed and interpreted so there are two main extremes of uh, research philosophies one is objectivism and the another one is uh, constructivism so objectivism holds the view that uh, the truth is independent of people's perception okay in objectivism we separate the truth from uh, the meanings people assigned that for, for instance covid-19 is a deadly virus it exists it is a reality okay constructivism it tries to understand the truth from the meanings assigned by people it tries to understand the truth by uh, the perceptions people have of it so for instance there are many uh, groups in many societies in the world uh, uh, who perceive covid 19 as a conspiracy they believe that it is a conspiracy of uh, big pharmaceutical companies to sell their vaccines to get their uh, patents of their vaccines at a very high price uh, it is just an influenza so there are many countries there are many societies there are many groups of people who have this you know uh, conspiracy associated with uh, covid 19 so this is constructivism you are trying to understand the truth from uh, people's perceptions of it you're not separating the truth uh, from the people you are actually you believe that uh, truth is socially constructed uh, whatever people believe is that is the truth okay that so this is the constructivism so uh, objectivism and constructivism are, are, are entirely different uh, philosophies so 
let me give you an example that uh, that will help you understand that uh, about this middle ground what is this middle ground this is these are called as realists now there, there is one more philosophy here as well uh, which is called as pragmatism and which is very much relevant uh, related to realism so how realism is different from objectivism and constructivism for instance objectivists believe that covid is a deadly virus okay constructivists believe that people perceive covid as uh, as a conspiracy from big pharmaceutical companies yeah, okay it is uh, just an, uh, another influenza but realist realist are uh, in realism we try to understand uh, uh, the constructivist and objectivist point of view in its context how for example as a result of realism uh, we believe that the people who believe covid as a conspiracy they live in those societies where attributions are made to the external powerful factors for example in those societies uh, if any calamity exists any calamity comes uh, they attribute it to the larger powers uh, they may be they may call it as an act of uh, they may they may call it as uh, an act of nature they may call it uh, as a, a you know conspiracy they may call it as a you know an, an a conspiracy of pharmaceutical companies so whenever a calamity comes in some societies they attribute it to larger external factors external powerful factors because they don't have sufficient explanation how they will explain okay so realism is trying to contextualize that why people perceive covid as a conspiracy realism is trying to give us accurate picture that why some people believe that covid is a conspiracy and some people do not believe it as a conspiracy and the answer realism gives us is this that it is because of their societies some societies attribute uh, calamity to, it, to, the, to the external powerful factors so this is uh, you know the difference between objectivism and constructivism and the realism and you need to keep this uh, in consideration because objectivists they use quantitative data objectivists their research is more structured in nature okay constructivists they largely use qualitative data and their a uh, research approach is more unstructured in nature so you need to uh, you know be very clear that what kind of research you want to do if you if you are doing a qualitative research then you need to study more of constructivism you need to perceive reality from uh, how people see it not uh, you uh, you need you, uh, you don't need to isolate reality from the people uh, in objectivism if you are using quantitative data then you need to separate objective uh, you know reality from the people then you may try to make sense of it in a different way okay so this is a very uh, important distinction and uh, realism is uh, when you try to contextualize research so uh, whenever we try to uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, talk about different countries different cultures that's why we talk about cultures that uh, in some cultures uh, some uh, practices are perceived as very weird but in some cultures they are perceived as okay okay so uh, that is why this is realism uh, you know the culture is a very realistic uh, you know perspective culture gives us answer that why in some cultures uh, it is okay Uh, to shake hands but in some culture it is not okay to shake hands in some collectivist culture you hug if you if you want to show your hospitality but uh, in covid-19 everything is changed uh, you know so uh, the, uh, re uh, the the realism is trying to make sense of both objectivism and constructivism so we have discussed positivism we have discussed constructionism we have discussed realism the middle ground and now we will discuss the pragmatism it is a philosophy which is very close to the realism and some uh, researchers they uh, they you know uh, they don't even classify it as a separate philosophy they believe that it is so much similar to realism that we don't need to classify it as a separate philosophy but uh, uh, just to make it more simpler, uh, i would like to classify this as separately uh, pragmatism means that you should do that research which is you know practical in nature which has practical implications you know the theory should inform 
the practice you know you should use theory to explain human behavior like we used expectancy theory to explain why some students don't want to submit assignments after deadlines because they expect negative consequences so we use theory to explain the behavior of the students so that was pragmatism so pragmatism is very much uh, you know trendy topic and uh, that is why uh, we are trying to bridge the gap between academia and industry this is pragmatism so whatever you have learned whatever you have learned in your uh, you know courses uh, during your stay uh, in your bs programs or mba programs it should be very much industry relevant otherwise it it is it is not a pragmatic uh, you know uh, so that is why we need to design more pragmatic courses more pragmatic degrees if we want to uh, you know fill the gap between academia and industry so the main premises the main idea behind pragmatism is this that uh, the purpose of theory is to explain human behavior and that theory which is not practical which is not uh, you know that streams of knowledge which is not actually applied uh, in the real world in 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 organizations uh, that stream of knowledge is not useful because it is very much uh, you know away from the uh, far from the uh, actual organizational practices okay so this is pragmatism uh lastly i will discuss about the induction and deduction uh inductive and deductive reasoning are the two kinds of reasoning deductive reasoning uh, uh, you know it is uh, relevant to uh, quantitative and structured and yes so it, so deductive reasoning is uh, relevant to quantitative and structured approach and inductive reasoning is relevant to you know qualitative and unstructured approach so uh, we will discuss uh, them briefly so deductive reasoning is a this uh, which starts from uh, generalization and it is concluded uh, in uh, in specificity so deductive reasoning is a way of building an argument from general uh, general premises to a specific conclusion okay uh, for example I, i gave you an example that uh, we got evidence from italy that uh, covid-19 has uh, uh, you know Uh, change the consumption habit of consumers in Italy. COVID-19 has changed the consumption habit of consumers in USA, in France, in UK. So there is this is this is a general uh, premises. So we conclude that the COVID-19 is also uh, expected to change uh, the consumption habit of consumers in China. So from general premises, we make a specific conclusion. This is called as uh, deductive reasoning. Uh, there is another example here. Uh, which is very interesting uh, it states that uh, the international students living in china uh, and their views it states that uh, the international students who come from socialist countries they have a more favorable views of china and those international students who come from democratic political systems they have lesser favorable views of china and then we uh, deduce from this uh you know evidence because these evidences are not uh, you know our own research uh, this this is the evidence which is uh, acquired from different researchers you know this is their work okay so we deduce from this uh, research that the international students from russia they will have more positive view of china as compared to the international students who come from usa and this is deductive reasoning because we are uh, you know de deducing this from the existing literature and then we have inductive reasoning and the inductive reasoning uh, is different very different and uh, in some cases opposite to uh, you know deductive reasoning uh, inductive reasoning involves uh, making generalizations based on isolated events okay for example uh, you have this observation that every random person you meet uh, in the times square new york is a supporter of donald trump now can you reach the conclusion that mr donald trump will win the election in 2020 this is something uh, you know which requires uh, the test of adequacy have you met you are assuming that the random person in 
Times Square is, is representative of a common US voter. You are assuming that Times Square is a representative of US electoral mood. So uh, are you, uh, do, do you have enough, uh, you know, sufficient uh, evidence to reach this conclusion because you are basing your uh, conclusion on the basis of uh, some isolated events. You have met few people in Times Square and because they were supporters of Trump, so you make this conclusion that Donald Trump will win the election. So this is inductive reasoning. Uh, you make general conclusions from few isolated incidents, few isolated events. So you need to be sure that uh, you, are you following principle of adequacy? Uh, is there enough adequate evidence to make these general conclusions? So that is why we say that we use grounded theory in inductive reasoning. Grounded theory is an inductive approach uh, which uh, makes uh, which uh, you know requires researcher to begin investigation with complete open mind without any preconceived notions about what will be found uh, this approach is usually used in domains where research is not sufficiently conducted before so grounded theory is related to uh, exploratory research grounded theory is related to qualitative research theory is related to unstructured approach so see your choice of research types uh, will determine your whole research process. Okay. So this is the end of our first session. I will like uh, you to, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, ask some questions. Uh, if anything is not clear, please feel free to ask me questions. If anything is not clear. Uh, not really. Uh, the online class time will be different from the regular class time uh, because uh, uh, we were, uh, uh, you know, one class per week and the other uh, time will be made up by your discussion questions. So, no, it will not be same. It will be different. We can discuss on our WeChat group ab about the appropriate timing of online classes. Uh, this is a question which has regularly, uh, you know, uh, it has um, surfaced during our lectures about the online, uh, you know, class timings. Yes, any question about the uh, lecture? What about the homework? Okay, so let me discuss your homework. Okay, this is your homework. Okay, so uh, this is your homework and uh, this is your discussion question. Now, uh, this discussion question has uh, three different parts. Let me uh, reiterate uh, this discussion question to you. It has three different parts. So, so this discussion question uh, asks you to describe a situation which you use research in order to inform thinking uh, in relation to a personal issue. Okay. So the first part of this discussion question is to discuss your personal issue, a personal issue. Now, uh, you don't discuss uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, that which you can discuss uh, with your fellows. So you need to discuss a personal issue. It can be an issue like buying a mobile phone, uh, uh, choosing one to university for studying, or choosing a course, etc., etc., going on vacation. So this is the first part of your uh, discussion question. Second part is how you have used research process. A research process which we have discussed so far in our first session how you have used a research process to solve that personal issue okay this is the second step of your discussion question so uh, uh, you can uh, discuss the research process about uh, how you uh, collected the information how you collect uh, how you uh, solve the issue what is the role of theory 
Now, this is very interesting because when that issue, uh, um, you know, uh, um, was there, that issue was created or that issue was, uh, you know, it, it, um, uh, it uh, aroused, you were not aware of the theory. Now you can, uh, you know, uh, understand the theory. You can read the literature. You can see which theory could be used uh, to, you know, describe uh, that personal issue, like uh, we choose expectancy theory. Uh, about the late submissions of uh, assignments so you can use uh, so you, you you need to mention the theory uh, which was uh, you know which could be appropriate uh, in understanding that personal issue and lastly you need to answer this question do you think that making everyday decisions involve thinking like a researcher this is the third part of your discussion question do you think that making everyday decisions uh, involve thinking like a researcher so this is your third part of your uh, discussion question you need to uh, post answer uh, in to these three uh, you know discussion questions parts and after posting your answer you need to evaluate the responses of three more students and you need to critique their reasoning okay so uh, you can post your response to discussion question today and you can uh, evaluate the responses of three more students uh, you know maybe tomorrow or on friday uh, or such a day so you have till such a day so such a day is the deadline so you need to critique three more students uh, about their uh, uh, their personal issue about the research process they have used and about their uh, uh, opinion about uh, does everyday making uh, you know uh, decisions involve thinking like a researcher so these, uh, this is your discussion question, and uh, this is how I expect you to answer your discussion question. Okay. Uh, is uh, your uh, any question about discussion question? Any ambiguity about your research question, about discussion question? One more thing. Very pa important part of your uh, business research course is your individual research project and uh, you know the, your individual research project uh, is so important that it constitutes 730 points 73 percent of your grade uh, is based on your individual research project so these are the five assignments which uh, you will submit uh, during the course of uh, uh, this semester like the literature you draft uh, you will be told uh, the uh, when you are supposed to submit uh, it is still uh, uh, you know a long time uh, is in this submission the literature review uh, about the research which you are going to do okay the research proposal draft the research proposal the final research report so all these uh, you know assignments accumulate to uh, make up 730 points out of 1000 points so this is your individual research project and it is very very important because uh, in last semester there were group subjects and there were lots of complaints that uh, some students said that they worked really hard and some students were not working really hard so that is why this is an individual subject uh, it would also uh, you know increase my uh, hard work I, I i need to uh, you know evaluate each and every you know research project separately but it is uh, uh, really very helpful for you because your grade is in your hands now okay it is not decided by other people so you have to be very very serious about your individual research project uh, i will keep on uh, giving uh, tips and suggestions and guidelines about your individual research project but uh, at the moment if you have any question about your discussion questions uh, any problem or anything you want to ask about your lecture uh, please feel free to ask me everything is clear
okay nice okay nice uh, so if any questions uh, pops up in your mind um, you know the you can always ask me through chat or uh, through email address and uh, i will share these slides as well uh, because these slides and these lectures are made from multiple sources so uh, i i expect you to read the two uh, books as well but uh, because these are made from multiple sources so it is very important for you to uh, attend these lectures as well if you cannot attend the live lecture then please listen to its uh, recording okay thank you very much i hope you had a um, great day your first day after the vacations and uh, i hope uh, you will have a very good semester ahead thank you very much for your time and for your patience bye bye Bye-bye.